Why, hello there, you fine-looking bunch of travellers. Welcome to Thelden, a realm that was once created by elves and dragons together, in harmony, before they wiped themselves from history and vanished completely. Now it's a land of opportunity for humans and dwarves, the odd halfling, full of riddles to solve and secret ruins to explore. Don't let me get ahead of myself. I am Artemis Underhill, bard extraordinaire, and your best friend for a price. These idiots at something called the Explosion Network have asked me to tell you an epic tale of three courageous heroes and their quest to rid the realm of Theldom of true evil. To be honest, that's a bit boring in my tastes. So, let's scrap that idea, and I have an even better tale for you. This tale is of a warlock with a drinking problem, a dragonborn whose name the history books have ever been changing, and a teenage wizard who is a little in over his head. Three yet-to-be heroes brought together by a terrible situation with a chance to do a little bit good together. For themselves, maybe for Elden at the same time. This motley crew of morons will dive into dr dungeons headfirst, argue over comfy furniture, drink some tea, and look, they might even survive a battle or two by the skin of their teeth. But, as I said before, I am getting so far ahead of myself. Let us start at the beginning, and how this group came to be, because that in itself is a comedy of errors. Welcome to the Tales of Thelden. You now find yourself in the town of Ashcroft. It's a small town, uh, very protective of those with magical abilities. Uh, it is generally, uh, you've been to this town a couple of times with this troop now. It's a favourite of Edgar's because the people are so good to him and they are so good to those who have the arcane natures and mysteries. It has been heard that in the local holy town of Silver's Keep, they have put out a ruling that magic users must be registered and identified properly before being able to f roam freely in the world. This has not spread this far just yet in this rural town. You find yourself late on the third evening of your arrival, since your arrival here. You find yourself in the local tavern, the Hook's End. The tavern... Very bleak, very musty, but full of life of characters. Men drinking from after a long day's work, the barkeep Wilson. Always, you, you seem to, you've taken notice over the last couple of days that he is always cleaning the exact same glass. All the other glasses in the tavern are dusty and moldy and disgusting, but this one glass is always in his hand and he's always got a rag polish here. You find yourself in the tavern. Edgar up on the stage playing and drawing in the crowds. You see each man chilling, drinking, being merry. A lot of them, you know, get loose lips as soon as they start drinking and just a tank it of ale. You've entered the tavern. What do you wish to do? I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of really intrigued by this this one glass story, and I, I, I'm sick of just going by each time I come here without asking. So I'm gonna walk briskly over to that bar. I need to ask questions. You walk briskly. You manage to dodge the patrons as they walk up to the stage. You move between them. Um, you've got, you've become quite good at moving through a crowd without actually touching anybody. You walk up to the stout old human man named Wilson. He's missing a couple, most of his hair and a couple of teeth. And what hair he does have left is kind of combed over the top of his head. Uh, it, it moves as he starts juggling. And after he starts cleaning with each scrub, it moves slightly and comes out of place. But it defies gravity by all means. <laughs> I say, I kind of just put my hands up on the bar. I say, what, what, hello, Wilson. How are you? Ah, oh, lad. How good, thank you. Business is great. Your friends are doing a fantastic time up on stage, and we are making a lot of gold. How can I be of assistance? That's always that's great to hear, Wilson. It's always happy to hear. Look, I've been wondering the last couple of days, and I'm intrigued. You know, I'm a bit of a bit of a note keeper. I like a good story. I see you're often just cleaning this one 
this one glass here. Is there a story behind that? This glass, you say? Well, this glass once had a princess drink out of it. And it is the... A princess? F- a princess, indeed, laddie. Indeed. She was the finest lass that ever came into my tavern. And since that day, I have promised I will keep this one glass clean for her for when she returns. That's... That's how, how long ago was this, Wilson? Uh, that was... Uh, and he starts counting on his fingers. So he puts the glass down with the rag gently. So let's count. Uh, 10, 15, uh, 25 years ago. 25 years ago. How old was she when you last saw her, Wilson? Uh, why? The last was the last was about in her third decade. Right. Do you, do you ever, just out of interest, Wilson, not, not trying to come across rude, do you ever wonder if maybe she's passed on no lassie she was lad it she was too fine she was the goldenest hair and the beautifulest lass in this tavern and she promised me that she would return to have another ale from this glass Fr- from that very glass that's that's an interesting story now you've where where did she go when when she left here why did she leave and where was her journey taking her um, to be honest, lad, I never really thought to ask. She just left out the door. Well, that's... So she just left out the door one day. You said, lass, where are you going? No, Will no, I did not back? ask where, where is she going. That's... A gentleman never asks where a lady's going. And then it seems like you're following her. Life well, lessons, laddie. Yeah, I never learnt that lesson. I can tell you what, that's probably half my problems with my love life. But that's a separate issue. Wilson, do you ever wonder if... And I'm not telling you how to run your bar here. But do you ever wonder if you should possibly clean any of the other glasses that are quite dirty? Why should I clean them, lad? All these blackguards and scoundrels don't deserve a clean glass, not like the princess. Well, I'm not trying to sound like I'm a prince or anything, but I would quite like a cleaner glass, Wilson. You would like a cleaner glass? You Look, I'll get you a cleaner glass just for you. And he puts the glass gently down again. Grabs another glass. This one is dusty and dirty. He spits in it. (laughs) Grabs a dirty cloth from out one side. Kind of spins the dirt around it. Are you having ale, lad? I... I think I'm good, actually, Wilson, to be honest. But you just asked Uh, me to clean a glass for you, so I did. I just... I ate some really weird stuff before for dinner and it's just suddenly started turning in my stomach to be honest like no offense wasn't you wasn't here definitely wasn't here the food's great here i'm sure but just just feeling a bit off now so i'm probably just gonna skip it it's fine in fact i probably need to just go to the bathroom right now and i i i turn i turn i i'm sick of this conversation i turn take me i head towards the bathroom okay lad (laughs) goodbye (laughs) Quickly, you see him at the corner. I pick up the clean glass again and start polishing it. Um, I, 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 I quickly realise I've I've never looked to to realise that there probably isn't a bathroom in this place. So I'm just gonna no, there's not, <laughs> not not there's a there's a bucket to one corner. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go out of Wilson's <laughs> eyesight for a, for a, just for a little while here to, till he f- forgets that that conversation ever happened probably so i'm just gonna wait, wait, let's just head up the back here the as far as way as i can near this this guy near this you, you know that you know that the your actual troop of bards have actually taken this large table up the back as their own um to actually um be a part of the tavern but to still have their privacy if needed very good. Well, I'd like to go there. Go That's there. where I'm walking. You take your seat in the back. This seat's quite comfortable and you've made sure. Um, we, your routine as part of coming to a new town tends to be you find a comfy chair and you slam it down where you want it to be and you make sure it stays there. That's, that's good. That's good life lessons, that's, really. You've, you've learned the way of the land. So I sit down. feel quite good. My, my, my buttocks feels quite comfy, which is a great sign to me. I, I turn to the the guy to my left, and I I, I just ask him how his how his evening's going. 
you know this man as Roderick. He turns to you and, oh, all right then, yeah, all right there, Leaf. Uh, yeah, it's not too bad, you know. Uh, we just just been uh, trying to find out. Have you heard the story about that missing son of a duke? There's a duke the son- gone missing. Oh, well, there's son a of a duke. duke. Son of a duke. A son of a duke. Missing. Yes. Which which son of a duke? Because there's quite a few. Son of a duke. Uh, I don't quite know his name. I know the duke's name is Corden of of oh crap. Where where did he say? Oi, Barry. Where did he say his name was from? Who? The the duke. Oh um. Um, wait, let, let me ask Greg. Greg! 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 Oh, yep. Right. Oh. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Barry! Barry! Yep, yeah, yeah. It was from that Dale. That Dale. Oh, that su- Sundale. I think it was Sundale. Oh, uh, okay, thank you. Roderick! Roderick! It was Sundale. Um, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was Sundale, I believe. I'm just shaking my head slowly with my hand and my head and I lift it back up S- Sundale yeah that's, it, you, what, that's what that's what I heard I don't know if four, you heard that but I heard the it the four of you took to very good right so uh, the Duke of Sun Sundale yeah I think it was Sundale right. don't, so what's don't, this? my sources aren't very good sometimes so it might not no be I completely believe you just have after witnessing that mess, so what's the story? What's the what's the rumor? Give it to me. What uh, kidnap, murder, run away with a lover? What's the, there's usual uh, the usual kind of story. Apparently, he like blew up his house and then ran away. Well, that's an interesting one. I can't I can't say I've heard that one before. I yeah. need more details. Uh, well, apparently, you heard the old Dodgers at the old uh, Oli Guards. They, uh, they've been out looking for you lot spellcasters. And I heard they came along looking and uh, blew up his house. How far well, they, they away? They didn't blow up his house. Like, wait, let me just do... Barry! Barry! Did, did I began like, shaking my head again. Did, like, he blow up his house or did the gas... No, it was him. Oh, all right. Uh, it was him. He, he blew up the house, apparently. He was he... practicing to be one of you wizards. Okay, well... I don't know if you're aware, but you can't just practice. Not the point. Anyway, so how far away is this house? Um, the house? I believe it was a bit away, you know? Uh, I believe I heard that apparently there was news on the crows that he was running in this direction, and that's why people were looking out for him. Oh, uh, really? Now, do you know what he he looks like, this Duke, um, son of Duke? Look, look, no. I haven't heard no. that at all. Maybe ask Barry. He's pretty good information, this uh, person. Yeah. Right. Good idea. I might go ask Barry. I, I'm i pretty sure I know where he is. I get up from the chair and I'm going to go sit down next to Barry. All right there. Leaf, how are you? Yeah, all right. Look, I'm just inquiring about this, this missing Duke fellow. The missing... I don't think the Duke's missing. I think it's the Oh, there's the missing son of the Duke. Oh, Sorry, the missing question. son of the Duke. Okay, right. What You're about one it? to correct. Do you know what he looks like? Do you, like we, I, I mean, I'm after details. I heard he was heading in this direction. Is there a possibility he's here already? Well, to be honest, I heard the story from Greg. Yep. Right. So, so I should talk to Greg. Is what you're saying? Um. Uh. Yeah. Talk to Greg. Okay. Well, I, I get up from the chair and I walk over and I sit next to Greg. Hello, Greg. All right there, uh, Leaf. How you going? Yeah, good, mate. Listen, I'm just inquiring about this missing son of the Duke fellow that's on the that's apparently on his run up this way. Oh yeah, on this one up this way. That's what I that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh, do you know what he looks like, and or if there's a possibility that he's already actually here? Uh, look, I heard it from Edgar himself. Maybe you should go speak to Edgar. Edgar. Yep. So. Edgar's performing currently. Yeah, you might have to wait for that, but uh, I heard it from him. Or maybe, have you talked to Roderick? Roderick normally knows this kind of thing. I'm I'm at the stage where I think it might be best to just chill out, listen to the music, maybe go try and get a clean glass. Actually, that's a good idea. Wil- Wilson's probably forgot about me by now. I'm going to walk over to the bar again. <laughs> oh. Hello, Wilson. Hello, lad. Haven't seen you for some time. What can I do for you? I know, right? Can I just grab 
a uh, the finest ale you've got. The finest ale I've got. Well, that's the only ale I've got is the finest ale, so it must be the finest ale. Let me grab it for you. He uh, picks up a tankard from one side, um, tips the dust out of it, and gives it a bit of a shake, fills it up with ale to the brim and slams it on the table, spilling about half of it. Thank you, Wilson. Um, how much is that, considering half of it just ended up on the floor? <laughs> I'll just put that on your tab ladder for your troop. Thank you very much. I'm going to take my drink and I'm going to go sit down. Oh, I don't know. Let's. I'm going to sit down to someone I haven't talked to. Maybe someone... Is there someone here I don't know? At this time, the actual music stops, um, comes to an end, um, and Edgar hops off the stage and walks towards a small table to one side uh, when another bard jumps up on the stage and starts beginning a tale. We go over and sit down with Edgar. You saunter over and he kicks a chair in your direction for you to sit down. Not quite as good as your previous selection of chairs, but, you know, you'll make do. It'll do. I'm willing to... I'm willing to put up with the chair that was pushed in front of me, so I sit down, pull it pull it under myself, sit down. I groan slightly under my breath at the, the fact that my very good chair is just up the opposite end of the bar. It is. It is indeed. Bar room. Annoyingly. I say, good, good show. Good show there. That's uh, as usual. Good once again. It's always a good show, kid. You know that. I know that. Let's just be honest. It's always a great show. It is. Now, look, great show, but I've spent the night inquiring about something, and I've heard you might have some more details for me, not to be annoying, but son of a duke fellow, apparently. Run son a, of run a away. duke fellow? Who's the son of a duke fellow? Oh, you mean the son of the duke? Right. Yes. Yeah, oh, my... Yeah. Honestly, you just... Kids, you need to be better at explaining things. Honestly, if you ask the best questions, you get the right answers. I've told you this like ten times. Yep, you're totally right. Nonetheless, uh, infamous. Do you know much the story? Well, uh, what on the street is it's right here in Ashcroft somewhere. Um, heard there's a big reward, but nobody in Ashcroft really wants to give him up. They're good people here. Sadly, or you know us, we would probably would have taken him all there already. Um, yeah, apparently he's, you know, a very quiet fellow. Uh, sticks to his books. Haven't really seen him yet. Apparently he doesn't leave his house much. Doesn't leave his house. So his house, he's staying at a house here in close by? Uh, apparently so. I don't know exactly which house. Um, the, uh, the river ran dry on that bit. But, yeah, apparently he's here. Interesting. Now, if I was to try and find where his house is and talk to him, would he be one to talk to me, do you think? Um, well, if you ask stupid questions like you're asking with me, then I, I don't think so. But maybe if you ask good questions, he might do. He might do. Interesting. Do you know where I would be able to get more information to the exact location of where he's staying? Um, well, I, I put Roderick on the job. Maybe ask Roderick. He might know. Goddamn Roderick. I... S- <laughs> Where is Roderick at now? Uh, over the other side of the bar still. He's still... Okay. I'm gonna mu- Thank you for your help. As you, uh, as you go to actually go, to, a small boy almost rushes through the door. <laughs> Um, you know him as Ransom, one of the rogues of your bardic troop. Oh no! Oh no! Guys, 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 guys! Come on! Come on! We gotta go! We gotta go! The Holy God's in town! The Holy... And as you see that, you hear a large bang come from one side of the distance away from you. You find yourself in the town of Ashcroft, where you've recently been positioned and posted to defend. The town of Ashcroft is a small town, fairly easy for yourself to defend. You've managed to find the easy military outposts to put in place to make sure you cannot be attacked. Attacked easily. The air is cold, and you there's a stillness in the world that you've come to know is not not too settling for you. Um you spent the night in the forward base at the front gates. 
The fire pits are growing low, still burning with their fire. Your men still performing duties, walking around, talking. You find yourself in the front guard tower. Your right hand man and lieutenant with you, Grimhook, who is showing you the different details that you. This is probably your least favorite part of the world currently, or work in the world where you've come to be a part of the Gilded Fist is the paperwork, the the looking at numbers, the finding out what your men are eating, or that you haven't got enough supplies. This is, you've always thought this is not a soldier's job. You find a boy runs up to you about midway through the evening. Um, hello, sir. Um, you could tell he is very small and a dragonborn is not a usual sight for him whatsoever. He is shaking, um, gripping a couple pieces of parchment in his hand. Um, um, I'm, I'm looking for, for, Carl, Carl, Carl Idris. Carl Idris? Um, uh, okay. Uh, cha, 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 Lidris. What do you need, child? That is me. That is, uh, oh, okay. Uh, um. Here is um, some some letters I've been given to pass along to you. And he Why, thank holds you. Them out. He holds them out really low for you because he is a good maybe three foot below you still. Um, and you can see the part, like his hand is shaking as he hands it to you. So he passes it along. Understandably. <laughs> um, you unfurl the first letter. And the first letter... You, you actually know the handwriting of this letter. In very scrappy writing on this old piece of parchment is written, The dragon slumbers beneath the slums. My friend, they have taken my pe- more people. We await your return to the keep to free ourselves. I have news of Grant's demise. Thomas. I was hoping that was going to be Grant. You were hoping it was going to be Grant, yes. Mm. Um, as you you hear the news of Grant, your former mentor, the wave of uncertainty continues, and that that feeling in your stomach grips where you got your hopes up for a second there. I did. You uh, got the hopes up, and you quickly you stuff that note back in your backpack and grab the second one. The second one is an oddity. The second one reads, When it happens, save the wizard and bring the chest to me. Meet me at the Kobold's Hollow. V. Who is V? At this point, the uh, half orc, the half orc Grimlock comes over to you. Grimhook. Grimlock. Oh, yeah, that's such a cool name. Grimhook walks over. Ah, uh, there you go, boy. And he kind of flicks across a uh, gold points to the kid standing before you and he runs off. Um, a bit of a hop in the little boy's step. He doesn't normally get gold. Uh, what are you up there, boss? I have a couple of letters. Well, I can see f- that. Who are they from? One is from uh, a V. Uh, I have absolutely no idea who that is. Um oh. I am intrigued, and it seems to be foretelling uh, of, of something that will happen to us. Um, and another is a letter from home. Oh, okay. Foretelling? What do you mean for... And as he said, goes to say foretelling again, there is a horn come in the distance. And your men start rushing around outside, gathering up, coming together, uh, forming ranks. What do you wish to do? I wish to know where the horn is coming from (laughs) and what the horn is about. The horn is about. I'm going to get you to roll a perception check for me. So roll a d20. 20! 20. You got a 20? Yeah. Your 
Well, and 19 because I got a minus one perception. You do. You do have a minus one perception. Uh, even with that, you, your military brain was still working in the background and it tends to do this. Um, and you know that the horn was coming from before the front gates um, mm-hmm. and, and that is where your men are gathering as well. It doesn't seem to be a horn. It is a horn you recognize, actually. You know it's the horn that the men of Silverkeep use. Okay. This is intriguing. You hear from outside, Riders at the gates! Riders at the gates! I'm on top of the wall. Can I look down and see who the people are? You're not quite at the top of the wall. You're back in like this hut. Back. Oh, here. I, th- I, thought I, was, could... I thought I was up top no, of the wall. No, no. You can be at the top of the wall if you wish to be. I wish to go to the top of the wall top and the wall. see you, what's going on. You run through and the men make way for you. Um, Grimhawk follows at your side um, until you find yourselves at the top of the wall. Before you, you see an extremely large battalion of men. Fuck. You see two men that have ridden much further and are much closer to the gates. They're stood just in front of the gates. And you see the close to a thousand men stood over the other side of the wall. Are they chasing them? No. They are... The thousand men seem to be waiting. They're all in the same garb. And Mm. the... The two men riding towards you seem to be in much more formal and superior armor compared to the others. I uh, I call down to them and ask, uh, "Who is it at the gates?" Before, just as they're riding up, they hear you. They go to answer. I'm going to get you to roll a perception check for me. Hmm. Yep. What did you get? Twenty. Twenty again? Yeah. Fuck. That's some, uh, that's some broken shit right there. Okay. Well, I just rolled a 20 as well on it. You once again, battle ready, see the very, very common to you insignias of the Holy Guard. I feel like they're the bad guys feel like you would remember them as the people that came to try and take you. Mm. I do remember them as the people that tried to take me. You do. Um. You, the riders now get into contact with you and the horn stops blowing. Havast ye! It is me, Charles Wind, Lieutenant of the Holy Guard. We're here to seize your magical users and creatures. You're here to get f- is what you are. Um, preferably, well, actually, you bring up a good point. It has been some time. Never mind, never mind. I see you there, Dragonborn, and we are here to capture you and bring you back. I was as using well- it in the figurative, not the literal. Prepare to die. Wait, now is prepare to die figurative or literal? Literal this time. Literal this time? So you're changing between figurative and li- Just- no, Never mind! Never goddamn mind! We're here to kill you! Well, no, we're here to bring you back! As well as any other magic users in the town. There are no magic users here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not wearing the signias of the Holy Guard. He actually does take a second to double check he is wearing one of the insignias. No, no, yep, yep, no, I am. Yep, exactly. I'll give you one more chance. Open your gates or we will be forced to attack. I don't think I want to open the gate. You don't, th- you don't think so? Well, he's just going to get in. <laughs> uh, I think that's what opening the gates does. Yeah, it lets them in. Mm, I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that? I'm not going to do that. You're not doing that? Okay. A five? Oh, wait, I didn't, I didn't warn you about why I'm counting. I'll give you to the count of zero from five, so I'll go five, four, three, two, one. But that wasn't the count. I'll give you that count, 
and then after it, if you, if these gates aren't open, you'll 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 be sorry. Count away. Five, four, three, three and a half, two, one. How is it you intend to make me sorry? Go! As you see it, this divine ball of energy launches from the back of the battalion, flies through the air, and slams into the wall next to the gate, completely obliterating it. Oh, and those people. And there's the, your men on that side of the wall um, are reasonably fucked as it breaks open, leaving rubble everywhere. And is on fire currently as you hear, Charge, men, charge! You also hear explosions mm. around different sides of the town as well. Oh no, oh no, guys, 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 come on, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go, the holy guard's in town, the holy, and as you see that, you hear a large bang come from one side of the distance away from you, um, a large bang, almost like an explosion happens, guys, we gotta hide, we gotta hide, we gotta hide, we're gonna be in so much if we don't hide, at this point, at this point, Edgar grabs you by the scruff of your neck and hurls you to one side over the top of the bar, you are just behind the bar, at the last second before you almost smash into it, Wilson like grabs his prize possession glass and put and like puts it in a safe spot and grabs a massive hammer from what off the top of the bar. Edgar stands in front and leans on the de- on the uh, bar itself with many of your troop either hiding or leaving through the back door. Ransom stays with you as three large men burst into the tavern. All wearing golden armor um, with almost like a sun insignia on their chest. Um, you know these to be the Holy Guard. All right, then. We're here to collect your spellcasters, your magic folk, and your fair folk. Hand them over, and there doesn't have to be any problems whatsoever. Well, lad, we don't have any over here, Wilson says. All I got is me trusty hammer. I can introduce him to the side of your face if you want. None of that. Old man, you, no. He uh, walks over to Edgar. We've heard about you. Heard you're a fine man with an instrument, and not just in the normal sense. Well, uh, I, I don't really know, I guess. Um, have you heard the tale of the magic instrument that went boom? Um, and at that point, a loud, thunderous wave erupts from the front of his loot as he strums it once, pushing the guard backwards. The other guards spring into life, then fighting around. Another one rushes through to Edgar. I'm going to get you to roll initiative for me. So roll a d20. Uh, My first dice roll of the series, everyone, is in fact a one. (laughs) Because of course it is. (laughs) Of course it is. That's the way we like to start. So, we're just going into combat. We actually start with Edgar, who pushes out and then from his side draws a sword, runs at the guard that is ran up to his side and tries to swing at him. You see him run, slide under his legs, and actually slice at the uh, the guard's legs, doing about five damage from your looks of it. Do we fight as the guard drops down to one knee? So now the guard's turn as one of the guards rushes up uh, to the other side of Edgar and starts swiping at him. Uh, You see as Edgar slides under, he stops himself and then claps a punch in the back of the head. The guard punches Edgar in the back of the head and Edgar like looks dazed and confused for just a second. With that, he moves and you see some of the patrons start fighting with another one of the guards. And now Ranson, who is stood next to you, actually jumps over the top, stands on top of the bar, and throws a dagger. Uh, Which? At uh, number three, at the third guy who's initially been hit. But misses completely. It bounces off the back of his armor and flies up into the corner of the room. You hear him swear loudly. Oh, f***! As he uh, misses. Uh, It is now your turn. 
I'm I'm gonna pu- I pull out my dagger. Yep. And I want to jump on top of the counter, and I do I want to do like a leaping strike onto three. A leaping strike onto three. So you yep. run up on the counter. All right. First, I'd like you to all right my, make a roll for attack. So roll your d twenty. Plus four. Yep. So so six. Yep. You leap in midair as you you kind of like yell. Um, as you awkwardly leap up and go to slam it, the guard catches you with his shield and pushes you back uh, as you fall clumsily back onto the bench. I land on the bench and I kind of just go, oh, for f***'s sake. Uh, you're going to have to do something better than that, kid, as Edgar's now dueling with two of them. Uh, I yell out to Edgar, I think I drank too much. Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm on me sixth point. And as you said that, Watch out the way, lad! As the uh, the barkeep Wilson jumps up onto the um, bar and actually then drops down, swinging his hammer with all of his force. Natural twenty! Ba, 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 ba. As you see, what is amazing, you see, um, you see him dive over the counter at number one almost do like a barrel roll in mid-flight and swings around his warhammer, clocking clocking number one in the face. You see blood just explode out of his face as the body falls limp onto the floor. I watch in horror, shock, happiness, and I yell out, you're a sick, Wilson. (laughs) Hi, lad. Do it for the glass. For the glass! And he runs forward into deeper into to, uh... What? At this point, you actually see two more guards run into the tavern as they start loading in. You can hear the sound of fighting outside. You can hear almost like the roar um, of a dragon. You know you've seen um, in the local guard a bronze dragonborn. You hear him roar. As the fighting begins, it is now Edgar's turn again. Edgar goes to swing at three and hits and hits him again. This time, cutting him in the side of the of the knee. His so the guard like cripples with pain and actually just like goes down to one knee for a second before picking himself back up. Um, the guard looks ready to go um, and ready to fight. Edgar goes, "Okay, lads, we might be in for a long haul here." Uh, then Ransom jumps back up onto the top of the bar and takes another swing with his dagger. He hits him in the side of the neck. The The guard, like, topples slightly but stands up ready to fight. Your turn. I'm going sh- to I'm gonna shake off, look at Ed- Edgar, and go, I swear this time I've got it. And I'm doing a repeat move. You're going to try and jump with the dagger. I need to land it, I say. I yell out, got him, as I go for there. As you go for the dagger flying through the air. No magic was needed for this warlock. He rolls, roll to hit. That's a, uh, what was that? Plus, all right, it's a 20. Not natural 20. but Not natural 20, but it's a 20. It's a 20. You jump up. You actually slip on a pool of beer that you previously had spilt on the floor. Not looking cool at all. You manage to slip, and while your arms are wildly flaming, flailing in the air, you slam it into the back of the guard in front of you. I'll get you to roll your damage for me. So it's 1d4 plus 2. With, I got a 1. With zero might whatsoever, you slip and slide the dagger into him. You feel the cut of his spine as you dig into it, and he falls limp onto the floor. Meant to do it. You should probably clean up more often, though, Wilson. I'm a bit busy here, lad! As you then notice about six more guards enter. I turn to... (laughs) I look at him and just go... (laughs) You've got this right... (laughs) I'm going to have to, lad. Ransom, get him out of here now. Oh, God. Righto, let's do this. And he runs hopping against... Te- hopping on... Um, 
Hopping across the tables, he jumps up into the air and strums his loot in mid-air, creating a sound wave explosion in every direction. Four of them go flying instantly, like backs against the walls. As you see, the da- the um, thunder wave is almost ripping into them. At this point, um, I think it's time to go. And he and Ransom actually grabs you and starts pulling you off towards the direction of the kitchens, where you've seen a couple different people leave. I yell out, "Bye, everybody!" And everybody, everybody also suddenly turns and goes, "Bye!" <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> the whining is too loud. As you start running out, um, he grabs you into the street. You see fighting in every direction of the street. The militia guards that have been posted here. Um, Many dead, many fighting. One dragonborn fighting in the middle of the streets, warding off all the soldiers around him. Who am I with? You're with Ransom, the little boy at the minute. Oh, Ransom. This is what you see. This is what you see. I turn to Ransom after I'm looking around. What the f*** is going on, Ransom? Um... I think I think the Holy God have come to gather up all the spellcasters and take them back to the Abbey. Well, I gathered that much, but this is quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite quite a lot. Just um, just uh, 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 just uh, lead the way, boy. And he grabs you and he starts leading you towards a cart. Uh, he chucks you back into the cart, um, and you hear the sound of fighting come closer, drawn nearer. Um, I'm really sorry about this, but, uh, I have to do this, and Edgar said I always have to protect you for the best of your ability, so, uh, I need you to get in this chest. And in the back of the cart, there's this semi-large chest. I need you to get in. You what, mate? I need you to get in the chest. Oh, for f***'s sake, I get in the chest. You get in the chest? Yep. You get in the chest, it is quite cramped. It is quite uncomfortable. And I mutter under my breath, this is not... A comfy chair at all. And as you say that, you hear, you feel the blunt end of a dagger hit you in the back of the neck as the world fades to darkness and it goes black. And as I slowly do, get, go down, I just... <sighs> the horses flow forward. Takes them a minute. As you hear the, the hooves stamping on the ground. A lot of them take positions around the town. They don't immediately come in, but a small group comes in first. Your men start unleashing catapults on the wall, firing into them. It's a full-fledged, like, siege at this point, uh, as different men start charging in. Can I, uh... Can I see where the other explosions have taken place? Uh, I'll get you to make another perception check for me. Um, from what you can see, you can see one big explosion nearby to one of the taverns. Um, and another explosion to the very south of the town. Hmm. And do I have any men anywhere near either of those? You know you have a decent amount of men stationed in all areas of the... Hmm, good, good. You had about 200 men with you. It's not very many. V-1000. No. No. <sighs> There's innocent uh, women and children... There is men, women, lots. and children in this town. There is, there is lots of innocent men, women, and children in this town. At this point, you feel the tug on your side as you turn around and see a hooded figure just behind you. Human, very small, teenager almost, as you can see his face. So you must come with me right now. We've got work to do, and this isn't something we're winning. What do you propose, human? You got the letter, didn't you? I did. I wish to go with this... uh, Can I get... uh, Grimhook? Oi! Rally the troops to... uh, stow away... the magic peoples. Alright! Oi! You lot! Get the magic f***ers! As different men start charging, start engaging in combat, a couple of them start running backwards, trying to hide it. Ashcroft is known for being very protective of magic users. Um, so you, you've, you've got some understanding that there probably is um, some already put in place mechanisms that people are using to hide and to find shelter currently. Excellent. This pleases me. You are pleased. I am pleased. 
I'm going to have to go with this child to see what he wants. This teen. This teen. Yes. Where, where, do, where does he wish to take me? This way, sir. Um, and he starts rushing back um, deep into the camp, into the town. I'm going to trust that there is a way for me to sneak get out of the city. Because yeah. they like magic people. So I will go with this child. You see, as you're rushing through the city as well, there is fire, there is burning, there are so many holy guards around the place, raiding houses, men and women screaming, there are dead in the streets. You know this kind of chaos before, because it's come to your own home, um, and you've seen it several times now. As you run through the city... Uh, you find yourself in one of the back alleys. Yeah, just behind the biggest tavern. Um, as you enter, three guards burst out from behind the tavern. Oi! You! Scaly! We're here for you! Is there anything I can hide behind? Um, There's like little boxes around the crates, but there's nothing... There's nothing overly you can hide behind. They have seen where there is a cart to one end of the street. Uh, can I see what they are? Like how how armored they are and what weapon they, they are have? not. They're not very. They're they're obviously lower men. Um, within side the holy guard, they've got a couple of swords. Um, and just leather armors on them. You could take them. Hi, child. You don't need to see this. And I push the child behind a... uh, a, As you push him, he actually springs over the top of the crate you push him behind and lobs a dagger that hurls through the air um, and squarely hits one of the soldiers in the side of the neck. He braces himself. Uh, He braces himself. You see the blood start pouring down slowly. Um, maybe you should hide. A competition you want? Well, you know, nothing nothing like a bit of fun in the middle of the city siege. No, idiot, let's kill them and get out of here! I... run up between, uh, between two that appear very closely together. Yep, sure. And take a massive swing with my cat of nine tails to, okay. uh... In, in, in an attempt to sort of hit both of them in, okay. in one you foul run up, swoop. You run up with, in their surprise of their friend being stabbed in the side of the neck. You run up um, and you slide in between them, unraveling your cat of nine tails with, um, you can see the cold metal of the dragon heads that adorn the end of it. Um, hit the floor as you swing past. Um, you hit at them. I'm going to make you make two, uh, roll the d20 twice. I got a one and a nine, plus five. Plus five. So, on the first attack, uh, you slam the cat of nine tails and the heads bury into the wall and get stuck. You manage to, with your second, with your momentum, you manage to pull it out and rush back and smack the second one on the back of the head with your whip. Uh, I'll get you to roll the damage for me. So that'll be one d six plus three. Uh, well, I got a six on the d six. So you do nine damage. Yes. Uh, and now I'll get you to roll initiative. So you roll a d20 and then you add your initiative bonus to it for me. Uh, that is a 8 plus 2, 10. So, start of the combat. Uh, after their surprise, they all swing at you, all three of them. Um, actually, two of them, one of them runs, actually dashes down the street towards... Well, one's got a we? knife in his neck. How is he not dead yet? Um, it's, you know what, he's putting up with it. <laughs> he rushes down and swings at the boy. You see him, the blood that's now run down his hand, down his arm and into his hands. He's gone to swing and lost grip of his sword. Um, that was a nat one on the roll. He lost grip on the sword and the sword goes flying into the distance. The soldier now weaponless stood before this boy like juggling daggers between his hands. The other two take two swings at you uh, and they both hit. Uh, no, the second one does not hit. But the first one does and deals 
four damage to you as you manage to jump over the first sword swipe and as the second one comes in it catches you fair in the chest and pushes you backwards a little bit as you land on the floor um you take four points of damage um your turn as you yeah now wielding your two cat of nine tails what do you wish to do um do i have any idea how how much health these guys have got not really. Um, you can see, you know which one you hit earlier. I got to swing at him again. Gonna swing at him again? Sure. You uh, you whip around. You swing both your nine tails in succession at him. Um, I'll get you to roll do two d twenty. So two attacks again. So nineteen and thirteen. Yep, both of them hit. Roll your damage. So you roll that d six again. Two plus three. Roll it again. Oh fuck! Uh, five again. Five again. So did you do both at the same person, didn't you? Yeah, you did. I did both at the same person. I'm trying to clean cool. this guy out. And that you do, you swing through, you feel the impact as you spin around of both of them, and then you see the gush of blood that trails behind them in the air uh, as the first guard, like, tumbles over and falls. Eat it, dickhead. <laughs> um, with that, the first one, the last one remaining in front of you, takes a swing... And that's a miss. As he swings past, you manage to, like, catch it with the edge of your whip and push the blade upwards away from you. The little tear. You then turn around to see... You turn around to see uh, the teenager running towards you now, leaving a corpse behind him. He runs in and swings one of his daggers at um, the soldier, but missing at the last second, the soldier catches it with a shield and pops it up. Um, You take this as your time for advantage, and what would you like to do? It's your turn. I'm going to... Whip out my long sword. Yep, so you managed to quickly you wrap up and stow away your, one of your uh, whips and oh, draw your sword. Is my sword two-handed? Uh, it's versatile, so you can use it two-handed if you'd like. Okay, yeah, so I, I've sort of wrapped my nine tails around, uh, around one of my arms, whip out mm-hmm. my long sword and just drive it into his chest. And drive it into his chest? Um, sure, uh, roll a d20. Four. Four, you miss as you go to drive it. He parries it out of the way from his own and then swings at the teenager. Uh, and that'll be a hit. He does. You see a long gash form on the side of the teenager's arm as he yells out with pain. Ah! As he um, takes the damage. The teenager then whips around using the force of that hit to actually hit at the man um, and jams a dagger into the side of his head and he flump the corpse slumps down lifeless you can see the teenager kind of like shakes his arm and kind of looks like he's putting it back in position quickly <sighs> I can see you handle yourself pretty well dragonborn hmm 2-1 still I've got some yes. uh, some work to do yes because we're f- counting in the middle of a raid ugh <sighs> ugh he goes, right, this cart here, you need to take it. On the outskirts of town, there's a hut. In that hut is a wizard. You need to save that wizard. He is of much importance. The foretelling? Uh, yes, the foretelling that was used as a mechanic. I mean, yes, the foretelling that warned you of this would happen. Uh, are you V? Uh, no, no. The name, my name's Ransom. Ransom? Ransom, yes. Funny name for a bloke? Um... Well, you know, me mum and me dad, they just... Why are we talking about this? Just get in the goddamn cart. There is a chest in the cart. Be really careful with that chest. It, you know, just be careful. It might, you know, make any noise. Just, you know, just let it go. Just let it go. Open it once you get out of the city, okay? Okay. Okay? Thank you, Ransom. Okay. Um... Right, I'm going to help my friends now. So, um, you do that, and I'll, I'll be there. So, thank you. Be <sighs> well, son. And he runs off and he darts back into the tavern. Um, you hear the sword fighting begin again with him there. As you jump into the cart, um, and you ride it out at full pelt. The two horses going, um, at full pace out. You, you do not stop for anything. You continue through... You manage to drive it up and over and you do like a cool like Fast and Furious style like jump over an explosion and 
You manage to And get I don't out. look at the explosion. You don't I just look. keep cool go- going. Cool guys don't look at explosions. You got it. And that's where we'll leave you for now. You have faced several weeks on the run now. The world that you knew, the comfort of your favourite armchair, the life you led before is over. You have fled to the city of Ashcroft. Friend of spellcasters, the city has put together what they can for you and helped you in any way they could. Upon your arrival to the town, you were actually, they knew you were coming. They had been told. A letter had been placed into their possession, and you were given this letter, as well as a key. The letter read, Welcome, young traveller. I understand the road that lies behind you and that which lies ahead. You will be safe here for now. You will find this key, which leads you to a house. These people will show you exactly the house you wish. The house is yours for your time being here in Ashcroft. Food will be brought to the house, and there is a large supply of books. Scrolls and parchment for you to look through as you desire. Signed, just the letter V. Now, the people of Ashcroft hurry you through and brought you to the hut, which you have now resided in for three weeks as you look back upon this memory of your arrival. And it has been quite to your uncertainty has been quite relaxing almost, which is really weird. The, the, the time you spent on the road to get to this point made you feel like you would never have some comfort for a decent amount of time, but you found it here. But that safety you used to feel in the back of your head still has not returned. You spend your time going through the scrolls, and many of the books are histories and legends and very strange things like the maps of Silver Keep, the nearby holy city information on the history of that town different wars that were fought there heroes and legends that happened within that region you had always found such things like this very interesting but at the same time nothing you have ever read has been in such detail almost like schematics to the city almost like the real life information not just histories and tales At the end of the third week, on the morning you have been sat pondering one of these texts again, um, you hear a knock at the door. I peer out the window and see who it is. Uh, At the window you see a young man, hood up. Uh, You know this young man to be a boy named Ransom. He's but a teenager. He has... Uh, brought you various books and food over your time here in Ashcroft. Uh, open the door. I'll let him in. He uh, walks past you and nods his head, pulls back his hood and closes the door. Ah, Cornelius, how are you going, sir? Okay, I guess. Tired. Tired? You need to stop reading those books till the early morning. We provided you with a comfy bed, yet you do not seem to use it. (laughs) Now, I have another message for you from V. Yes, who's V? (laughs) V is your benefactor. The reason you've got such a nice home to live in. He is the person that made sure you would survive. Okay. What's the message? The message is, make sure you stay in the house tonight. No no matter what happens, stay in the house. Whatever you hear, stay in the house. Do not leave. Your first instinct will be to leave. 
please do not. No matter who comes to the door, no matter what they say, do not leave. I think he wants me to stay here then. Is that... Is... <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, the, the young youth uh, pulls out the an apple from his pocket and you are ever a quick one, aren't you, Cornelius? Uh, I do my best. Well, do your best to survive. That's all I can do. Oh, by the way, a bit I left off the end of that message. There will be a moment where you will need to leave the house. This... Mm-mm. Why couldn't he just say what's happening? I mean, okay. Thank you very much, Ransom. Is How there did... anything else you need? No, I think I'm fine. I'll get back to my reading. It's very confusing. Not Nothing in life is so simple. You should know this by now. And he turns very and true. walks out the door. The rest of the day passes and your unease about what had just transpired continues and you sit and you try and read and there's always in the back of your mind his words, do not leave. But leave when the time is right. But do not leave. Can I uh, cast Find Familiar? You can indeed. Yep. After thinking through your textbooks you find the spell again. You utter the words that transpire and you cast it into the air. The magic flows from your fingers up into the air, spinning and spiraling, forming a ball. And then out of that ball comes two wings. An owl appears. Hoots once. And then lands on the edge of the table next to you. Uh, Would you mind keeping watch outside? Apparently something's going to go down tonight, so I would like to be informed of what's going to happen. When it happens. Ooh, ooh. And with that, you understand that it is heard. Um, it kind of flies towards the window, but... I, I go open and, the window. It, it carries on and flies <laughs> out and <laughs> takes purchase somewhere nearby. You can hear him hoot every now and then. With the comfort of knowing that you have somebody watching, you spend the rest of your day trying to read, trying to learn. All of a sudden, you hear, whoo, whoo, and then just a moment later, you hear three raps to the door. I peer out the, is there a window next to the door? Yes. Yeah, so I peer out the window and see who's there. You immediately catch the direct ice line, eyesight of a large man. Full armor, sword at his side with the hand resting. The man is older, mid 40s. He is wearing the crest of your family. All right, an- answer the door. Ah, uh, information was right. Cornelius Bannister, I, Artrum, soldier of your father, am here to return you. And ask for you to return with me to your family home. Uh, nah, I'm good. And I shut the door. <laughs> you slam the door in his face. You hear the man grumble something and then he knocks on the door again three times. I'm going to bed. Leave me alone. You kind of cuss cut around trying to make noise of you. You hear the man, Cornelius, you need to come now. This is the safe option for you. Come now and we shall sort out the issues. I'm feeling pretty safe here in this nice warm hut. So you can go tell my dad he can get stuffed. That will not please him. This is your last opportunity to get out now and save yourself. Save myself from what? The holy guard? I'm pretty sure I can take care of myself. You are but a child still. The holy guard have years of training for your kind. My kind? What do you mean by that? Spellcasters, those that dabble in the arcane mysteries. Well, if you don't leave soon, I'll show you what kind of spellcasting I can do. And it's your decision. I ask that the gods take pity on you and your judgment. 
and he turns on his foot and walks away. You hear the um, heavy footfalls of leather on gravel as he walks away, uh, and then you hear a horse gallop away. I go back to my reading. You go back to your reading. You take your position. You sit um, and you ponder what is going on. You gather some things from a nearby chest and continue to read. Your night of reading in your attention is disrupted by four large explosions. All coming from towards the edge of the town. You hear men charging past the door. You hear the screams of women and children and men fighting in battle. Uh, can I see through my familiar's eyes? Yeah, you can. Uh, what you see is... The city is on fire. Many of the militia that protect this city... Are now fighting with men... In golden armour... Bearing the insignia of the Holy Guard... Which you had seen when you last fled your house. There is... More Holy Guard than there is militia... Okay, I gather as much, many books and as many scrolls as I can in whatever I can. Sure. I'd like you to, just before you leave um, your familiar's eyes, I'd like you to make a perception check for me. So roll a d20 and then add your perception skill to it. Ten. Ten? Yep. You also notice a a dispatch of three men walk forward towards your house away from the fighting you know it's going to take them a couple minutes to get into position right. I get ready and I cl get as much as I can as many books as I can and then I climb out the window after and then shut it behind me your main problem is in your house yeah the only window you have yeah goes forward out into the street okay will they be able to see me if I go out the window um what we'll do. First, make a uh, make an investigation check. I want to see how many books you grab in this time. 18. 18. You grab pretty much everything you needed. Everything that you were worried about or concerned about. Uh, you found extremely quickly. You go to open up the window. I'm going to get you to make a stealth check for me, please. 10. You see... As you climb out, you put your first. You start putting your first leg out the window. You hear, Cornelius Bannister. We members of the Holy Guard are here to bring you to justice and return you to Silver's Keep to be judged, trialed, and to be registered. Um. I go back in the house and <laughs> shut the window. You go back into the house <laughs> and shut the window. You gingerly step back into the house and gingerly slide the uh, door down. Uh, whereabouts do you want to go in your house? Um, there's, a, I guess, in the room in the where room. the bed is. Sure. You hear the sound of... Poof, poof, crack. As the wood breaks of your front door. You peek around the corner and you see one of the men step in. Okay. I stay hiding. <laughs> you stay hiding. We need to roll a stealth check for me. 20. 20? Nice. The man walks around. You can hear his footsteps of his heavy metal gauntlets against the floorboards of your home. You can hear the sound of breaking glass as one of the cupboards is tipped over and smashed onto the floor. We know you're in here. Show yourself. I keep quiet. Keep quiet. You hear the sound of a second set of footprints come into the house. And you see the a large body walk into the room. With yourself pressed up against the wall. As he starts searching through. Uh, can you see me? Or I will hit me. He hasn't noticed you just yet. 
Is there enough room to get through the door? Or is he blocking the whole thing? Uh, he's pretty much blocking the whole thing at the minute. Okay, I uh, will use prestidigitation to make like some noise underneath the bed. Okay, sure. You make a crackling noise happen underneath the bed. The guard immediately runs towards it and slides over uh, and starts looking under the bed. And I just walk straight out. You walk straight out, get you making a check for me. <laughs> uh, nine. Nine? <laughs> you manage to make it out the door really well because the, the crackling continues to hide your, foot, your footfalls and your movements. But the moment you enter out the door, the second guard that was looking through your house... Oi! Let's get him! He's here! Um... Yes, I make a run for it. Yes, you make a run for it? Yep. Towards the... As he yells, um... For... You see a whip wrap its way around the neck of the gentleman stood in front of the door that has seen you. You hear the clear sound of the neck snapping oh, that's as, that was lucky as it pulls the body back through the door um, you can see I'm getting to roll a perception check for me fourteen you can see a cart outside the door now um, and a second body slumped over I run to the cart you run to the cart as you start running to the cart, you hear the sound of an arrow notch from a bow slide through and then graze the back of your leg, dealing six damage to you. Oof. I'll get you to make an athletics check, for, uh, an acrobatics check, or athletics, whichever you choose. 18. Acrobatics. Or athletics. 18? Yeah. You manage to continue and you manage to kind of roll um, to continue your momentum as he fires. Was it the um, guard behind me? Yes, that was the guard behind me. I will fire a fireball at him. <laughs> Did you roll a nat one? A nat one. As you fire the fireball, you hit the wall just behind the man and you can see the wall start to simmer and smolder uh, as the fire dissipates on it. I'm going to get you to roll uh, initiative for me here. Okay. 20. 20. Okay, so start of combat, what would you like to do? I will try and hit him with a firebolt again. Just try and hit him with a firebolt again? Sure. Roll you to hit. 11. 11? That's a hit. Yes. As you roll through, uh, roll your damage, which should be 1d10. Uh, 5. 5? Uh, 5 damage. Uh, you fire the firebolt, it glances up and hits the leather armor in front of the, of the guard. Uh, that completely, like, smoulders through, burning through it and actually ripping it apart. Um, it is now his turn. He's going to try and fire another what, Don't I get to move? You can move if you'd like. Yeah, so. I would like to keep going out the door. Keep going out the door? Yeah. Um, you run out to see the two dead bodies of the... The two dead bodies of the Holy Guard um, lay across the street, both with broken necks or with lashes from what looks seems to be some kind of whip. Before you stood on top of a cart with two large horses is a single bronze dragonborn. Ooh. Uh, thanks? As we hear the whistle of the arrow <laughs> flying towards you, we shall end our prologue here. That was a series of convenient events, wasn't it? Cornelius and Charlie Idris are now on their way to beginning their epic tale of sorts, but boy will they be disappointed to see what's waiting for them in that chest, if you know what I mean. <laughs> we shall leave their tale there for now. Please join us next time as our adventure takes a trip deep into the Kobold's Hollow to find the mysterious person that our adventurers know as V. Good night. The Tales of Theldon is an Explosion Network production. Written by Kieran Marchant. World and scenario by Kieran Marchant. 
played using 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Sound mixing and post-production by Dylan Blight. Music and sound effects resources available at explosionnetwork.com. Cast of characters, Dylan Blight as Leif Estel, Ashley Hobley as Cornelius Bannister, Thomas Marshall as Chalidrus, with Kieran Marchant as the Dungeon Master. <laughs>